In this tutorial we're going to be looking at how to texture your game level as well as some advanced texturing techniques and tips. So let's get started here and I'm going to show you the most basic one. We have a material selected called Beam 1 and I'm going to apply it to this material. As you can see it kind of got a little bit um, squished on the x-axis which doesn't look very good. Um, an easy way to solve this simply hit shift C. It will map the texture exactly to that polygon. It's pretty quick and easy. The second way, um, we're going to reset the texture coordinates. So we're back at starting again. We can just hit A. Now A brings up the map texture coordinates window. Here's where we can change the offset. So we can uh, go up and down with the offset, but simply it's really easy to use. I don't want to use that though what I want to use is the scale down here. So we have a scale of 100 for the vertical which is this way obviously and this texture is wider than it is tall so we can hit the number of 200 and that pretty much gave us the exact same um, scale of shift C. Okay this next uh, texture are these next little polygons here we have two of them in one object. So I'm going to texture one and texture the other one. Now as you can see they're squished just the, exactly the same as the other ones. If we hit Shift C while we're in geometry editing mode, it does it only on one polygon. If we do it over this one, it does it over on that one. However, if we want to do it on both, we go to brush mode and hit Shift C and it maps to the full thing. So that's pretty handy too. Okay, let's take a look at this guy here. For this purpose, the purposing on this one is to make you think a little bit. So let's apply the texture. As you can see, is running the the height of the pipe. Um, that's not how pipes work usually. Um, let's say we want this beam to be wrapped around a pipe. Well, we have to first flip it by 90 degrees. But now we have another problem. It is not mapped to the correct height of the uh, of the section here. So what I've done is went into the edit key configuration and I've changed texture wrap to the key of L. I had to remove the the camera orbit from this. I, I've never used camera orbit so I simply sacrifice camera orbit for texture wrap. So what I can do is hit L and I'm given some uh, some uh, options here. Follow path I don't really use. I don't recommend it. Um, so let's, let's just use linear and we're gonna stretch to fit and adjust the top to left. So if we hit OK it automatically maps our texture to where it has to be but it's upside down. So you can go back in the texture editor here, um, the UV coordinate editor I mean, and you can flip the Y which will basically flip it the right way and also flip X just to be sure. Okay so let's go ahead and take a look at this room here. Everything's pretty much done in this little room except the walls have a grid texture and there's no UV coordinates on them at all. So let's go ahead and find a wall from this package and let's use wall paint yellow. If we apply the texture you can see it tiles everywhere and that's not exactly what we want. Well, What we can do is we can select geometry editing mode and then hit shift C on this polygon. What it does is it maps the texture to the polygon but then we can go hit A and grab this number, 350. So apparently our room is 350 units tall, which is ex exactly what we need, we need to put into the U, which is the X. As you can see, it made the texture square. But let's back out of all this and undo our last move. And let's apply the 350 to the entire object. You can see now we're entirely mapped all the way across the room. However, now we're up in the air. We can come back in here and we can use these. Oh, look at that, it, it worked. So zero apparently is in the air. I'm not exactly sure why, but 4096 is right to the ground. You can play with this a little bit. You can go up or down and you can move the texture. Um, the longer you hold it, the faster it gets. So let's just move it down here. So apparently 3750 is also right at the bottom. So now our room is properly textured and um, 
it took no time at all. So this is our room from the part two of the tutorial and uh, it's not textured it has just a base grid texture. Um, however let's pick a different uh, wall texture let's go with this guy here with wood. If we select our walls in this room shift J and apply the texture you can see it tiles all over the place but using the same technique we can uh, shift C hit A this room is 250 units tall copy that undo we can do 250 250 and this room is actually perfectly done actually um, the texture tiles perfect it ends where it's supposed to end and starts where it's supposed to start so that worked so we can keep on doing this throughout our entire um, level here which I will do right now because it takes no time at all like so join it apply the texture and we need 250 by 250 okay let's get these two polygons out of there now we can select the floor join all the floor pieces and let's go find a tile floor 1c so if we apply this you can see in the she it mapped pretty well however the tiles are quite small except for here see we have a problem this little hallway here is bigger than the other way so what I want to do is reset the texture coordinates by simply doing this and we're at 100 let's enlarge this to 200 you can see our tiles are tiling much better and it, it just looks better okay that's pretty easy um, now we can do our ceiling tiles some nice stained ones let's go ahead and get everything selected apply the texture and we're going to reset texture coordinates Now. In World Edit, um, you have default width and height. That's what the reset texture coordinates will use. So f this one, for example, has a default height of only 100 and a default width of 200, which is double the height, which is exactly what this texture is. So you can set these up yourself to make it do that, and it, it speeds up the process quite a bit, um, getting your, your levels properly mapped. I don't like these um, tiles going this way. So I'm going to rotate them 90 degrees. As you can see now, they're they look a little bit better. Okay, um, we have a little problem here. As you can see, we have a, sl a sloped wall. And um, let's grab our wall texture we were just using with the wood bottom. If we apply the texture, you can see it runs the length like that. And we had a scale of 250. That is not 250 that is well let's say for this tutorial we want to rotate the texture well we can do this in geometry editing mode and just press K K will align this texture to the edges and uh, just like that we have now mapped our texture to this uh, this wall if we lower the grid size in the 3D viewport, we can use the arrow keys to push the uh, texture coordinates around. Now, it won't be perfect because this is a sloped wall and this is not how textures work. Um, it'll take you some time to align these properly. But that's a very easy way to do this. Now, if you also want, you can rotate your textures with the mouse. So if we go into geometry editing mode, and we hold down R and click, we can scale. If we hold down R, we can pan around. If we hold down R and right click, we can rotate it. So let's get a nice rotation like this and scale it up. So you can grab a lot of objects or polygons just like that and scale them pretty quickly without even using the, the texture uh, coordinate editor. It does have its limitations and I don't really recommend it, but it's there for you to use if you do need to use it. Okay, so with that said, um, that basically concludes this tutorial on how to 
map your textures to your polygons. Of course, there's some extra things we haven't gone over, but you'll be able to find a way that works for you. And if you don't, well, I'm sure I'll make another tutorial later on. So stay tuned for the next tutorial, and I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be going over, but hopefully it's something pretty cool. Okay, thank you. See ya.